everybody. December 11th, um, a like a single double type day for me. I had you know home run, uh, home run trade yesterday in the TVX. My goal today was just to kind of build off of that, build off of yesterday's day, just kind of focus on you know um, like a single or a double. And that's exactly what what I did today. I didn't really like anything off the open. And there's a few things we're going to go over with this video. One is the importance of identifying key levels of support and resistance on the daily chart. We're also going to go over why I feel like um, follow through to the long side in the morning has been hard to come by. Um, and we're going to get into a little bit about strong support versus weak support and, and those type of things. I only made one trade today, short SFIX, uh, but, and it was a good one. It was all I needed. I didn't, like I said, I didn't like anything off the open. So patience was really required today. I didn't, I couldn't find any A plus setups in the morning. There really weren't any. Um, and I didn't place my first trade till 10 07. So 37 minutes into the day until I made my first trade. That's how much I really didn't like anything off the open. And I really didn't like the action. And there's something I want to point out to you. This goes back to, you know, Follow through continuation to the long side has been hard to come by in the last couple of days. And here's the reason why. Here's a 15 minute chart of the, of the spy. Okay. ETF that tracks the S and P for six consecutive days. The market has sold off in the morning going all the way back to the third. Okay. Here is December 3rd, the big gap up day when everyone got excited about the trade truths. Okay. We gapped up, sold off in the morning. The very next day, we gapped down, sold off in the morning. The very next day, we gapped down, sold off in the morning. The very next day, we opened up basically flat, sold off in the morning. Next day, we opened up basically flat, sold off in the morning. Today, we gapped up, sold off in the morning. This is six consecutive days that the market in the morning has sold off. Okay. Two out of these six days, we had a rally to kind of take back those initial losses in the day. Here's one and here's two. Okay. Maybe a little bit. We tried to today to kind of take it back, but we couldn't really hold it. Uh, now we're trading lower after the close. But the, the, the point is here, guys, that this is why follow through to the long side has been harder to come by. Okay, these last couple of days, I have not seen really good continuation. And when I say continuation, I mean like stocks making new highs at 1030. Okay, I'm not talking about a stock that opens up at 930 and it goes up for the first three minutes of the day. Okay, five minutes of the day. It's not what I'm talking about when I say follow through or continuation. I'm talking about a stock opens up, pushes higher, consolidates, pulls in, and then makes new highs again and continues higher later in the after, later in the morning. Okay, that's continuation. You haven't really seen that type of action. It's been much harder to come by. This is why. Okay. Six consecutive days, the market has sold off right off the bell. Okay. I think I'm kind of, you know, as time goes on, I, I'm starting to feel like we're going to get back down to test. Um, I, I felt like this low was, was going to hold for a little while. Uh, today's action makes me feel like we may get down here and test this one more time. Um, I think we're going to get down and test that level one more time. So real quick guys, that's kind of, that's why I think that follow through has been harder to come by. Okay. Now with that said, let's get to SFIX, my only trade of the day. And it was short. And this talks about the importance of identifying support and resistance levels on a daily chart. When uh, guys, I developed my trade idea and the concept, the, the thesis behind my trade, I did that. I, that comes from the daily chart. Then I use the intraday chart to really perfect my entries and my exits. Okay. Had I not paid attention to the daily chart on this SFIX trade today, I would have given back all my profits. I would have given back all my profits. I rode this short down in the morning about as low as I possibly could have. I stretched almost every dollar out of this trade as I could, was very patient with it. And when we got down to a key support level on the daily chart, I covered the last piece of that position and the stock ended up rebounding and bouncing off of that support level on the daily. It rebounded all afternoon. The stock ended up you know, moving about $2 higher in the afternoon off of that support level. 
And, and that really, you know, saved me to lock in a nice trade. Okay, it was short SFIX from 1950. My final take profit was at 1858. Okay, or was it 1859? I think it was 1859. Yep, 1859. All right, so well, here's my trade announcements, but I'll, I'll take you to the chart first. Let's go to the daily chart here, guys. Here's SFIX, stock's gotten beaten down. We got a big gap down today below a key support area. Here is your key support area. Okay, very clear. There was your previous support area. We gapped down below it. Okay, we gapped down below that area. What I did, first did was I went to the daily chart and I said, okay, we've got key major, major, major support down in this area. Okay, first line I drew was right around 19. Okay, because you can see this support area around 19. So the first thing I did was draw a line across this $19 area. And I said, I'm looking for support um, down around this region. We opened up, well, let me go back and delete these little arrows now. You guys see that level. Okay, we opened up, gap down, and immediately sold off straight down into that level. That level then started to act as a little bit of an area of support. This is that same line that I drew on the daily chart. Here's a daily chart. Okay, there it is. Same line. Go to the three minute. Not a coincidence. Okay, you can see support starting to kick in here. Now we get on to the lesson about strong support versus weak support. I was expecting a much stronger bounce off this level. I was expecting something more along the lines of this. Okay, so once we sold off down to this region, you see how lazy the stock is? Look how lazy this stock is. This isn't a bounce. We're just trading sideways. And that shows you that selling pressure has just slowed down, that there's not real aggressive buying pressure stepping into this stock yet. At this point, when I said, wow, we're really not bouncing off this level, we may continue lower. I went back to the daily chart. Let me delete these arrows. I went back to the daily chart. And then I noticed just slightly below the support level that I had identified. Let me zoom this in for you. A major support level around 18. Okay, 18 and change, like 18.15 or so major support level there is your double bottom okay at that 18 and now i'm saying to myself okay now i'm saying to myself on this three minute let's go back to the three minute chart okay at this point when we were trading in here i'm saying this thing may have room down towards 18. we're really not bouncing off of that support level that i drew previously i then noticed that vwap started to act as an area of resistance so right here, guys, when I saw VWAP kind of holding here, holding here, holding here, then you got a trade line VWAP crossover. I got short right there, okay, at 19.50. Take it to my trade announcement. See you guys at 10.07, short SFIX, 19.50, stop loss, $20 area. So risking 50 cents on the trade. I actually was moving my stop loss down as this trade worked out. I'll go over that with you. So um, I got short right there in front of VWAP, looking to fade this down towards that $18 area. The trade line, this yellow line on my screen, crossed down underneath VWAP, gave me a trade line VWAP crossover. And now I'm looking for that trade line to act as an area of resistance, as it did. Let's zoom this in. Let's get a real good look at this, okay? So here's the entry, right? Actually, it's here. Here's the entry, right there is my entry. Okay, 1950. It's actually right there. Okay, there's the entry. You then can see this yellow line starting to act as an area of resistance. Okay. That's what I was looking for. I got to move down towards the low of the day. So here we got down to the low of the day. I took some profit off right here. I covered some of this position right in front of that low of the day. Back to the trade announcements. Want to be smart here. Took some profit. Covered SPX 1910. Hey, not a big trade. 40 cents a share. All right, still holding some. But I want to take some off there and be prudent because I know there's support close to this area on the daily chart. So I want to take some off in front of that low of the day in case we double bottomed. 
And you can see right there, we tried to. You see, we tried to the bottom, this strong candle. We kind of bust through this trade line area. It looked like we were going to push back up. I ended up taking more profit at that point. Took more profit, 1925. Okay, just being smart. Right through that area, right here is where I ended up taking. Let me use a different, because that's the resistance. So here's my, here's one take profit. And here is two take profits. So here's my entry. Resistance, resistance, resistance. One take profit in front of the low of the day. Then when it looked like we were we broke above this down this uh, resistance trade line after we got the trade line view out crossover right here, I took more profit. I thought we were going to double bottom there because I know there's support there on the daily chart. And then as soon as we got rejected and went all the way back down towards lows right here, I said, okay, now we're going to break. Now now we should roll this down towards that low. And I was holding on to one last piece, looking for a new low. And there it is, guys. You see, bang, new low. And we ride it down all the way down to a low of the day of 1840. Okay, 1840 and my final take profit right there. Okay, at 1859. So there's the entry. First take profit, second take profit, final take profit. Back to the trade announcements here you guys see final take profit covered SFIX. Oh, excuse me, guys, I have to sneeze. Uh, SFIX 1859. Okay? And I'm I'm I you know I'm looking for this area. This whole trade, this whole trade was based off the daily chart. The whole trade. And you can see that level ended up holding support. Look at this bounce back later in the afternoon. Had I not been focused on that support level on the daily chart, not only do I maybe not even enter this trade, okay, but even if I do enter the trade, if I'm not looking at that support level on the daily, I'm going to hold on to this thing all the way back up to here and stop out of this position with a very minimal gain instead of extending the, the trade and really taking my profits off right here and really getting the absolute most out of that short rather than you know realizing that the short is rallying back and covering this position somewhere in here. Okay, so that's why it's really important that you always make sure that you know on the daily chart where do those support and resistance levels sit? Because they absolutely will affect the intraday price movements of a stock. And you need to use the daily chart to, to come up with your trade idea and the concept. And then you use the intraday chart to really pick your entry and your exit. Okay, so that's it, guys. One trade for me today, a single. Okay, not a, not a home run trade, but um, you know, I'm not, I'm not like a double. It was a decent trade. Um, I'm happy with the day after the big day I had yesterday, and I'm just going to look to keep that momentum going. All right. See you guys in chat tomorrow.